the gravitational pull of Florida is so much because you, when you get there, you spend time there and you go, I could live here. I could become this. It's something you become. You're not born that way. Maybe some people are, but you become a person that just is eating a conch fritter on the back deck at 3 p.m., you know, at, like I went out to lunch at Ocean Prime, which is a restaurant in Tampa. They have one in Beverly Hills, one in New York. It's a chain. I got out of there at three and my Uber driver picked me up and he goes, how was dinner? <laughs> so that's where they're at. He goes, how was dinner? And then he proceeded <laughs> to tell me about his wife. He was in the asphalt business. His wife defrauded him out of his company, wrote fake checks, the whole thing. He's like, the DA said it was clear that she committed a crime. He goes, I didn't charge her. I didn't press charges because we've got two kids. He goes, her sister, you know, said their whole family's bipolar. He goes, I just didn't want to. So he goes, now I'm just trying to get in business with my younger son. I'm like, oh, good. Ruin his life. You want just your own flesh and blood. He's like, my younger son wants to go into business with me. So that's what Florida is, like a great place to start over. What did Roger Stone say? It's a sunny place for shady people. You know, the dirty tricks guy, Roger Stone. Mm -hmm. You get the vibe when you're in Florida that there's a lot of people there that are running from something. There are people that have given up on, on whatever they tried to do. And they've come down in Florida and they're, they're doing a version of what they wanted to do. And, and it, it, there's something nice about that. And, there's, and, and everything's inexpensive relative to New York and LA. And you start thinking like, man, I could get in this groove. I could really, I stayed at a hotel for one night called the Don Cesar, which everyone said, you got to stay at the Don. It's where Louis stayed. It's on the beach. Beautiful old hotel. The owner killed himself in it again, Florida. It was a VA hospital during World War II. A lot of people died there. I walk in immediately. There's an old couple complaining that the restaurant was closed for renovations. It's 153 a night. Beautiful resort. 153 a night. Right now, because I'm between apartments, I am in, I don't even know what I'd call an inn <laughs> in Burbank. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's got nothing. I mean, it is bare bone. It, it looked like, it looks industrial, like every door looks like it's a supply closet. Mm. This is fucking two, 220, 200. Because if I wanted to stay in West Hollywood, it's like 400, 500, 800. You go down to Florida, 150, you get a resort. And, and that, so I stayed one extra day. The crowds were fun. The people that came out to side splitters in Tampa. You know, my cousin went down to Florida about 10 years ago uh, and she did Florida right. My cousin did Florida right. She's addicted to heroin. Uh, she's in and out of rehabilitations. She also will smoke crack. She said to me, she said to me once in a Chili's in Delray Beach, she goes, Timmy, I'm a real garbage head. Whatever comes, whatever, whatever they bring out, I, I, I do not discriminate. I'll take pills. I'll shoot up. I'll smoke math. She's she's a lovely woman, but she's had problems. She's had issues. It's not mince words. There's been problems. Okay? I remember Thanksgiving a few years ago, she was back up from Florida. Um, she'll come, they bring her back to New York. It doesn't work because New York is like, New York almost makes me do heroin. So if you're on heroin, you don't come back to New York to like get off heroin. So she comes back, she falls in with a bad crew, her old crew, or a new crew. It's amazing when you're doing those kind of drugs, you just figure out who's going to get those drugs and how are you going to get it. And uh, she was at Thanksgiving and my other aunt, my aunt, who's like a, a pill head and a drunk, goes, let's do, let's go around the table and say what we're thankful for, which is always a waste of everyone's time. No one's really, truly thankful for anything. 
Because no one will admit what they're thankful for. No one will admit the reality of what they're thankful I'm thankful that I got away with the D-Way. Like, no one says that. <laughs> Every, no one will go into the reality of what they're saying. Everybody's like, I'm thankful for the seasons. I'm thankful to be around family. You're not. You're not. No one is. No one is. It's, I'm thankful I didn't get caught cheating on my taxes. I'm thankful my wife didn't catch that 23-year-old blowing me in my office. I'm thankful my kid didn't shoot up the school this year with my parenting. He should have. But no one will be on it. That would be great if we all went around the table and we're like, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, half of my family would be like, thank God I was born white and I could just be mediocre <laughs> at everything and not have the cops constantly beating the shit out of me, even though they should be. Um, <laughs> but so you, you, you set up a situation where you have your everybody. When you go around that table, everyone's full of shit. And my cousin is at the table and she's, you know, she's tired. We, you know, you know what that means. I was an addict for years. I don't talk about her in a judgmental fashion. I get it. But she's tired. Well, you know, tired means that there's, there are problems. So we're going around the table and everybody's kind of nervous because they're going to get to her. I'm trying to think of something dumb and funny to say. I think I say it. I don't know. I forget what I even said I was thankful for. I think I said, now na na my nanny made chocolate pudding. My nanny makes the best chocolate pudding. It's, I think it's two packages of Mighty Fine Chocolate, one package of Mighty Fine Vanilla. Mix it up. You get the pudding skin. Pudding has to have skin. And, and it, so I said, I'm thankful for nanny's pudding or whatever. And everyone left. So we get to my other cousin and they're going, what are you thankful for? And she just like picks her head up and she goes, I'm sick. And everyone goes, okay. And they go right to the next guy. They're like, and what are you thankful for? And I'm like, well, do you see that this wasn't the move? <laughs> but she went down there and half of Delray Beach, Florida is a rehab. The other half of Delray Beach, Florida is a crack house. It's like there's a line down the town. Half of them are rehabs, half of them are crack houses. And you just shimmy over to the crack houses when you feel like relapsing. And then you go back to the rehabs and the sober houses. And these sober houses are big business rich kids that get fucked up their parents pay to stash them somewhere where they will be watched and the rehabs kick them out usually after 28 days so then they can't come home the parents are like we don't want to see them that's how we got it that's why they're doing drugs in the first place is because we're, we're busy making eight million dollars a year at goldman sachs not raising them so we clearly don't know what to do with them Put them somewhere and I'll open my wallet to make that happen. The Ridge wallet. So what then happens is you have these sober houses, these communities of people. And then my, my roommate, his girl was a sober companion. Her job is to sit next to rich people on flights so that they don't order drinks. I'm not even kidding. This is an economy right now. Poor people can't afford this. If you're broke, and I'm going to talk about my rehab experience in a minute, but if you're broke, you either don't go to rehab or if you go, they kick you out as soon as your insurance is out and they go, good fucking luck. Go with God. Go to meetings. Go to AA. But if you're rich, you go to all these bullshit rehabs, which barely work. Promises in Malibu. Look, you're riding a horse. You don't need to do, you don't need to take Oxycontin. You're on a horse, Nicole Richie. You're on a horse now. Well, then what happens when you're not on the horse? You go, well, I'm, I'm home now and I'm not on the horse. I think I'll take a pill. That's the problem. No one is fucking doing synthetic heroin because they, they, they have a lack of equestrian opportunity. That's not it. There's deeper issues you got to get to. But these, these fraudulent, you know, programs that they have in these, you know, billion, multi-million dollar institutions are just to distract you. That's what rich rehab is. It's like distract. We have beach yoga. It's beach yoga. Nobody needs to do drugs. We're going to do yoga on, at the beach. And then we're going to talk about our feelings by the sunset. And then we have a five-star chef who's going to make you a meal. And, and you're like, you're pampered. 
and it's luxurious and they're giving you whatever drugs they can legally give you to get you off the other drugs and whatever. And then you go back and the, the week the week you're out of that, you're using again. You're at One Oak or Ten Oak or 15 Maple or whatever these fucking clubs are on the Sunset Strip and you got your face full of a big cake of Coke because you learn nothing. You didn't grow spiritually. It's a whole lot of shit. But my cousin had gone down to a few of these places in Delray and she's put some clean time together and then she relapses and it's sad. It's a fucking, the disease is insidious. It's deadly. It doesn't let you out of its grasp, its clutches. It's a lifelong fight. And I I 100% respect that she's trying. It's fucking hard. And I remember I went down there to perform at a rehab convention because I used to do a lot of rehab comedy. Uh, When I first started comedy, those were shows that I could do. I wasn't in at clubs. I wasn't really working on the road. So the idea, the road was rehab shows. I did one in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where I got one of the best hackles ever. I said something about Jeffrey Dahmer, and somebody in the audience yelled out, Dahmer ate my friend. That was one of the best uh, heckles that I have ever had. It is the top five. Ten years of comedy, a lot of people have yelled shit out. That was the top five. Um, I did a rehab convention in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and then we did one in Pompano Beach, Florida. Flew into Fort Lauderdale. Now, the guy that used to book these was a one-armed ex-crackhead named Keith. Uh, he had one arm. The arm that he had, the fake arm, was so bad. It wasn't like it looked like a Halloween, like he got it at a Halloween store. It was like a prosthetic, but it wasn't good. It was literally plastic and it only had one, like he couldn't move any of it. It was like an arm that was always in the position of like him giving a speech as a coach. And he lost it smoking crack. He was a Marine, but he never really saw combat. But he used to get on planes and asked to sit in first class because he said he fought for the country, which everyone kind of knew was a lie. Like, no one believed that. And and that's also not the way planes work. You don't get to just sit in first class because you lost an arm for the country. And also, you didn't. Also, you're lying, which I always respected him for. I respected that he would lie like that and disgrace... Uh, the idea that there were people that had lost limbs for the country who just sat and coach, kept their mouth shut. But he lied because you're always an addict. You always, even if you're not doing drugs, you're always a fucking addict. Those behaviors, they percolate. They, they, they rise to the surface. They're there. They're there. And you used to see it when he would get mad. He'd be like, I can't fuck. He'd turn around and he'd go, I can't fucking believe this. He goes, there's seats open in first class. They won't let me sit there. And the woman's like, that's not it. Like, you have to buy a first-class ticket. And he's like, well, I'm a veteran. And I lost my arm for the country. And then she'd go, well, thank you for your service. And then she'd walk by him, <laughs> you know? But this is, this is who's booking the gigs. Keith. Just plain Keith. That's what he called himself. Just plain Keith. You know, if you, if you need, go get a potato and put a Marlboro Light in his mouth and watch that and then press play on your phone. 